Hello everyone, my name is Kodamore and welcome to episode 27 of Creating a Space Shooter with Godot. This is going to be one of my favorite episodes because I love the screen shake effect. I'm probably going to overuse it a little bit excessively, but that's for you to decide. And it's actually not even that hard to implement. So I want the screen to shake a lot when the player gets damaged, and I want it to shake a little bit whenever a bullet hits, just to kind of give it a nice feel to the game. So to do that, we actually need to add a camera to our game. So I'm going to click in my gameplay scene, and I'm going to add a new camera 2D node. Now a camera basically defines what part of your world is viewable, and it's usually the same size of your screen. Now we weren't using a camera before because we were just using the normal viewport that Godot sets up for you. But since we want an actual shaking effect, we need something to move around to actually shake, which is a camera. So we'll take the camera here, and we are first going to set its anchor mode to fixed top left. You'll notice that the camera is currently centered. And when we change this to fixed top left, it'll fit it right on top of our viewport, and it'll be the same size by default. Next, we actually have to make this camera active. To do that, you select the current option here. And you'll notice it gives it kind of a bright purple border. That means this camera is active. Now, our game is not going to change, at least visually, but the camera is actually the thing that is determining what the screen is seeing right now. Next, we actually have to make this camera be able to shake. So we are going to attach a script to this camera 2D here. So now that we have this camera, and if I use the move tool, you'll see that I can actually move the camera around. So if I move the camera here, and we run the game, you'll notice that we only see this part of the game. So that defines what we're able to view. I'm going to undo that so that it stays right where our normal gameplay area is. Now I'm going to rename the camera over here just to the word cam, just to make it a little bit shorter. And I'm going to attach a script to the camera. I'm going to save this script in, I don't know, we'll do a new folder just for camera stuff. And we'll call it shakecam.gd. So we'll change that to shakecam.gd. And we'll create that script. All right. So now we have this script that extends our camera 2D. Now I think I'm just going to write a majority of the code, and then we'll kind of go through after and explain what each of the parts does. I just think that'll be a little bit easier. First of all, we need some variable to determine how much the screen should currently be shaking. We'll call that shake amount. It's going to be a floating point number, so we'll set it equal to 0.0, .0 to begin with. That means no shaking right now. And next, we'll go ahead and we are going to have a process function, and that's going to do something eventually. We're also going to need a function to actually start shaking the screen by some magnitude, which is going to be a float number. We'll do something there. And these are the only two functions that we actually need for our gameplay. When something wants to shake the camera, all we have to do is add whatever magnitude it wants to be shaking by to this shake amount. So we'll do shake amount plus equals magnitude. And we're going to expect these values to always be positive numbers. Next in the process function, we are going to check if shake amount is greater than zero, then we have to shake the screen. Otherwise, we want to set the position of the screen to zero. We want to make sure it stays wherever it currently is. So we'll set the position of the camera equal to a vector two of zero comma zero. And that's just going to be resetting the camera to its normal position right here. And you'll see why we have to do that. Now, if the shake amount is greater than zero, we need to shake the screen somehow. And we can do that by using some random numbers. Now, before I actually code this portion of shaking the screen, I'm going to create a few export variables. One is going to be called the shake base amount, which is going to be a float. We'll set equal to 1.0. Create another one called shake dampening, which we'll set to something small like 0.075 for now. And we can tweak these, and this will actually change how the shake happens. We'll experiment with those in a bit. Then we have to set the X position of our camera to some just random value between this shake base amount, negative and positive. So we'll set it equal to rand range, negative shake base amount, to positive shake base amount. And we'll multiply that by our shake amount variable. I'll explain this in the end. And we're going to do the same thing for the y, minus shake base amount, and shake base amount, times shake amount. Next, we actually have to make the screen shake calm down a little bit. 
because if we just left it like this, the shaking would never ever stop. So every time something happens when the screen is shaking, we are going to set shake amount equal to this function called lerp. I will explain this in a, in a bit. We'll lerp our shake amount from 0, 0.0 to our shake dampening value. And this is really the amount of code that we need to actually get the screen shaking. Now all we have to do is call this shake function whenever we want the screen to shake. So for right now, I'm just going to have the camera shake whenever the player gets damaged. So we'll go into the player script, we'll go to the player damage function, and after we check the invincibility timer and all of that, and after we subtract from the life, we are going to begin shaking the screen by some amount. So first we have to actually get this camera node somehow to actually call that shake function. So we have to get some variable, we'll call it cam for the camera, we'll set that equal to get tree dot current scene. That's going to get us the current scene, which is going to be this gameplay scene, remember? And then we have to find this camera node. So to find a node in a scene tree, you can use the dot find node function. This will take in the node name that you want to find. We are going to pass in the word cam because that's what we named this node right here. And we also want to set here, and we also want to set recursive to true. That means it's basically going to search all the children in case this camera is, you know, inside of the spawner or something for some reason. And we're going to set owned to false because we are searching for a node anywhere in the scene and not just a child node of our player itself. So we actually have to pass false in for that third parameter, that way it'll search all the nodes in the scene. So now that we have access to our camera here, we can simply call our cam.shake function with some value. Let's try passing in 10 for now. Now let's go ahead and run the game, and let's purposely run ourselves into a meteor or an enemy. Alright, there's an enemy, and if I run into it, you can see that the screen shook. Happened again, and it should also happen if I get shot by a bullet. Yep, there we go. So, that screen effect is already kind of adding a little bit to the game. So before I continue on, let's go ahead and actually explain this shake camera code. Really, all we have to figure out is this code here. What we're doing is we're randomizing the position of the camera, the x and y position, by some amount. In our case, we're generating a random number between negative, whatever this value is, so negative 1, and positive 1. So that'll get us to either move the camera so that'll get us to either set the position of the camera to the left, negative, or to the right, positive. Same thing for y. It'll be up if it's negative or down if it generates a positive number. And then we're multiplying that by the shake amount. So if the player dies, we're going to pass in a big number to this shake function, so our shake amount is going to become really big. That means we want the camera to go really far over and actually shake a lot. Whereas if a bullet is hitting, we might want to pass in a small little amount of magnitude to the shake function. That way this shake amount stays fairly small, and it's really only just going to move a little bit, you know, between one, two, maybe three units. So if we increase the shake amount by calling this shake function, the camera is going to be moving further from its original position. Also, if we increase the shake base amount, the camera is going to move further from its initial position, even if the shake amount stayed the same. So we can actually experiment with that value in a second. Now after we do that, we actually have to reduce the shake amount, or else it's just never going to get below or equal to zero again. So to do that, we use this function called lerp. This is linear interpolation. What it does is it takes some value, our shake amount, and it takes some target value. So we know that we want shake amount to eventually get back to zero. And it'll actually return a value between shake amount and zero based on the magnitude of this third parameter here. That's called our shake dampening value. Basically, the larger this is, the faster that the shake is going to stop. But the smaller this is, the slower the shake is going to stop. Now if shake finally gets down to zero, we set the position to zero. Now there are actually a few issues still with this code, but let's experiment a little bit. Let's have a little bit of fun. I'm going to click on my camera node, and let's try changing the shake base amount to something really high, like 50. So now if we try that and we get hit by a bullet or enemy or something, here's the enemy. If I hit it, you'll notice that the screen shakes crazily versus what we had before with only one as a shake base amount, because it's basically generating a random number between negative 50 and positive 50 
then multiplying that by this shake amount. So we're going to get a larger amount of movement when the shake base amount increases. I actually like keeping it at 1, so that's what I'm going to keep it at. Next we have the shake dampening value. So if we change this to something like positive 1, we'll change it to 1. Let's see what happens when we get hit. There's the enemy. If we get hit by him, you can see that the screen shook really, really quickly. If we do it again, it's really, really fast. But if we make the shake dampening really, really low, like 0 0.001, you'll notice that with the same settings and with the same amount of shake force being applied whenever we get hit by an enemy, like this, the screen stays shaking for a really, really long time. And that's because that shake dampening value is really low. It means we don't really want to rush to get to the number zero. Usually that dampening value is going to be between zero and one. Now you'll notice that that's really, really long for 0 0.001, so I'll just reset it to the default. So my shake dampening value is just going to stay at 0 0.075. That's kind of how I like it. So that is the shake effect. Now we just have to actually utilize that on all the parts we want the screen to shake for. So in our player script, we already have this code that shakes the camera by a magnitude of 10 whenever the player gets damaged. I'm actually going to make that something like 20, just make it a little more, and I'm going to copy these two lines of code. And basically, I'm going to have the camera shake a little bit whenever a bullet, not an enemy bullet, but one of the player's bullets, so the, the bullet.gd script here, hits something. So if a bullet here damages something, we create the bullet effect, and we're also going to go ahead and paste that code to get the camera and actually shake the camera, but only by a little bit, probably just one at a time because we're going to have a lot of bullets hitting something at the same time almost, or very, very fast. Of course, we can tweak these values to our liking, of course. So let's start out by getting hit by something like the meteor. You can notice that the screen shakes quite a bit there. If we fire at our meteor, you'll notice that the screen slowly starts to shake because that shake amount, just one increase per every bullet that hits an enemy, is slowly increasing that shake amount variable in our shake camera here. So even though a single bullet only increases it by one, it takes a little bit of time for that shake amount to get down to zero. So if five bullets hit it in really, really fast succession, this shake amount is going to be, you know, closer to three or four maybe, and it'll slowly get down to zero again. I just think that adds a really cool effect for when the uh, player is firing bullets at something. It just kind of adds like a better feel to the game in my opinion. It might be too much for some of you, but I just like how the shake kind of gets more and more dramatic the more and more bullets hit things. All right, that was not a sentence. Anyways, everyone, that is the basics for camera shaking. There's actually a lot of different things you can change with this. You can make the camera rotate a little bit randomly and that'll add a whole different effect to this. You can also do a little bit different, you can also change up the math here and what happens when you call a shake. You know, instead of adding to the shake amount, you could just set the shake amount equal to the magnitude if it's bigger or something. If you're having too much shake in your game and you don't really like that, I personally like it, which is why I made it this way. And of course, you can change all these values to actually shake the camera more or less based on a certain magnitude. And you can call this shake function from basically anywhere in your game where you want shake effect. I'm going to stick with just the player getting damaged and a small little bit of shake when a player bullet hits something. That's all for this episode. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you all in the next episode.